Marsha Jones, and we are doing our health interventions with Marsha Jones, just in case you have not joined us before. So the whole concept with this is teaching you how to make nutritious meals and answering your questions while I'm doing it, because the hardest part of everything is usually eating, because you don't know what to eat. Reading the labels is difficult. You get tired of trying to figure out what's for lunch, what's healthy, what's not healthy. All those things roll together. And so my goal is for the healthy, for the nutrition, hormone balancing, decreasing inflammation, all of those things work to keep you healthier. So um, what we're going to do today, and this just looks like a bunch of stuff, but we are making Buddha bowls and we're going to make our own dressing to go on the Buddha bowl. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what these things actually are. So um, I'm plant-based primarily. I do eat other things. So when we talk about diets and we talk about nutrition, we talk about plants, I don't really like to label anything. So the old thing is like vegan, vegetarian, you know, a lot of people, they get in fights over things like that. Um, I'm not here to fight about stuff. I want you just to learn to make better choices. So um, I don't get into the whole vegan, vegetarian thing. Uh, what I do when I say plant-based, I eat plant-based because it's primarily plants. I try to get as many plants as possible because plants are where the nutrition is coming from. So plants have been used for medicine for years. Herbs have been used for medicine for years. You can make salves, you can make medicine, you can eat food. All of this is better for you than taking any kind of supplement. Nobody's gonna be perfect. So when we go through our courses and we go through training and that type of stuff, I don't try to teach you to be perfect because whenever you start doing that, well, you're getting nothing but trouble from everywhere you go. Because you're gonna start getting judged. You're gonna judge yourself. You're gonna beat yourself up if you don't do something perfect. So that's not our goal. Our goal is to add healthy stuff in, and eventually what you're gonna do is want more healthy stuff than not so healthy stuff, especially after you start to see how good it tastes. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna make the dressing first, actually. I was gonna make the, the mood bowl first and tell you all about it, but I think I'll make the dressing first. Um, because we have had a lot of questions about dressings and if anybody has questions, let me know because I forgot to ask if beautiful princess had anything to ask me today. Questions yet? Okay. So, um, making your dressing is so easy and you can do it with almost anything. This is a Greek dressing that I'm making because we're making a Mediterranean um, Buddha bowl and I really like the Greek dressing on top of it. So you can do this in any kind of container. You can do it in a mason jar if you have it. You know, whatever works to make your dressing. So this that I have here, this is olive oil. This is uh, pure olive oil, extra virgin, extra, extra. And so olive oil has a lot of really good omegas in it and those healthy fats that we need. Because remember, when we're making our hormones, when we're, you know, um, for brain power, brain function, everything needs to have healthy fats. This is red wine vinegar. Oh, and remember, you know I don't um, measure a whole lot of stuff. I'm not very good with measuring. I am going to give you the recipe afterwards that measures, but, you know, for now, I'm, this is three tablespoons. You know me, I'm going to wing it. Then we have some lemon juice. You can either, if you really go on above and beyond, you can squeeze your own lemon juice. Not me. That came out of a little squirty bottle. Garlic. This is a tablespoon of garlic. But after you've made your recipes, you can feel free to change it up, add more things that you like that you don't like into it um, to suit your own taste. But I can tell you, a lot of times I will find recipes and I will have to redo them until I make them the way I like them because there's always something just a little bit off. And so I try these things over and over before I actually will give them out for other people or well here in our cafe. I forgot to tell you, we're at the cafe right now doing this video. Um, but here at the cafe, these are some of the recipes that we actually use here. Now, this is Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard is so good and so many different kinds of um, dressings. And you'll see it's a staple in a lot of them. Look at me being all like proper here. Usually I just dump stuff in. Now, this is oregano. That's why I have this out here for you. So, oregano has a lot of health benefits. You want real as much as you possibly can, but we use the dried here because I can't keep real oregano around and just get thrown to waste. So this is about a teaspoon of it. There's a little salt and pepper in there too, um, but that's the part you might really want to change up depending on your taste. Okay, so watch how hard this is. 
We have salad dressing. Shake it up as much as you want. And before you use it, shake it up. I will tell you, um, you can leave this out on the counter if you want to for a couple of days, um, or you can put it in the refrigerator. But if you put it in the refrigerator, just know that it is going to get a little more solid because there's no preservatives in this. We didn't put anything in it that's going to you know, give it a long shelf life, but I've used these for up to two weeks. Um, put it, like I said, countertop or the fridge, but just know that if you put it in the fridge, it's gonna get a little chunkier and you're gonna have to leave it sit out for a couple minutes before you, you actually use it. So that was dressing. I know we had a question about that last week. Um, and, oh, something else that I keep, I wasn't sure when I was gonna tell this, but I am doing a cookbook, a recipe book, whatever you wanna call it. And in the recipe book, I'm gonna have these recipes that we're doing here. I'm also gonna have a bunch of information in it about the ingredients because you watch this, you see how it's put together, you see how it's supposed to look, and I'm just trying to show, because some people don't know how to cook at all. Um, I, I think that's funny because I was brought up in a house where I, that's, my mom cooked everything fresh. Um, except for the nasty frozen vegetables, Shh, don't tell mom if you know her. Um, if you didn't like vegetables because you got those nasty like Brussels sprouts out of a box that, that got all mushy, try vegetables again because that's the kind of stuff that I ate that was ugh. Other than that, she was a great cook. Um, I'm gonna move on to the food bowl now. Does anybody have any questions or comments even? Like, you're getting a whole bunch of hellos. I'm just talking about, well, hello everyone. These are fun, right? Um, and I do like seeing everybody's recipes that they've done and, and their modifications. So if you try it and there's something else, let me know. Like if there's something else you like or don't like, um, or if you might put your own little twist to it, um, that'd be awesome. So, I know I talk so much. So this is quinoa. So when we make a Buddha bowl, a Buddha bowl is a vegetarian dish. So you'll see a lot of them variations that throw shrimp on it or chicken or salmon or, you know, that's fine. If that's what you want, you can add anything on the side. But a true Buddha bowl is a vegetarian bowl of different vegetables and proteins and things for you to, to have for a complete meal. So this is quinoa. And a lot of people don't know what to do with quinoa. They've never eaten quinoa um, or just don't know a whole lot about it. So what quinoa is, is it is, um, it's not a grain actually. It's gluten free. Um, it is a plant and it is a complete protein. So that is the interesting thing about this. This is a, a complete protein. So if you don't eat meat um, and you're trying to get more protein for more muscle mass, um, for hormone balance, all those types of things, Quinoa is a really good source for that. So with your Buddha ball, I'm gonna put the quinoa there in the middle. And I want you to look at it. Like see how it's these little pieces. Um, and this is cold quinoa, but it's almost kind of like rice, but it doesn't have the bad of as many carbs as rice and it has a lot more protein. And like they said, that complete protein is that you have 22 amino acids that make up proteins. Some of them your body can make, some of them your body cannot make, so they're essential to get them from other places. And you need every type of protein for your body to build new cells and mitochondria and all that stuff you don't care about. Um, but quinoa is one of the only things you can get every single amino acid in, so that's why it's called a complete protein. And that's why I use it in a lot of things, like I'll use it in chili, I'll use it um, in oh, a taco dish that I do. Um, I use it as a binder. I use it uh, in our Southwest quinoa that we have, which will be in our recipe book. And like I said, this for cold salads. What was the question? question? What does complete protein mean? Oh, well, it's a complete protein means it has all 22 amino acids that are so a complete building block. So your body, every cell in your body is made of these amino acids and proteins. Your hormones are made from these amino acids and proteins, neurotransmitters, so all the signals that tell your brain what to do and talk to the rest of your body need all of these amino acids. So when you're lacking in amino acids, then something's gonna be off, you're gonna have a glitch. So that's why something like this every day or you know a couple times a week would be great. Um, and it's so versatile. Like I could talk about this for way too long, but um, you can make it like a, a cereal. You can put yogurt on top of this. You can um, put berries in it. You can put mangoes, like we talked about mangoes last week. You can do almost anything with it and it's really good. Um, 
if you've ever used like couscous, it, it's a nice replacement for couscous because couscous has a lot of carbohydrates in it. Um, and it's more like a pasta kind of substance than this. Um, this just, like I said, so versatile. And what we're gonna do the rest with this, I think I've talked your ear off about those. Unless you have more questions Is it diabetic it. friendly? Absolutely, because it is very high in protein and it is very high in fiber. So that minimizes the carbohydrates, that slows down your insulin response. And when we are doing almost anything with health, and I talk about any of your health conditions, I'm gonna talk about insulin and inflammation. And so when you lower your insulin response to what you eat, that decreases your weight, that decreases your hunger, that decreases your blood sugar, helps to balance everything out. Because insulin is evil and it's a growth hormone. So that's a fun fact that a lot of people don't know is that insulin is a growth hormone. So if you're diabetic and we put you on insulin, you actually start to gain weight. And we don't want you to gain weight, so that's why we've got newer medications and we try to teach you how to eat better to not get those insulin surges because that's what makes you gain weight and that's what makes you get a crash. So like if you eat a meal that doesn't have a protein or a fat and you're, you put out too much insulin to cover the, the glucose that you ate, you're gonna feel really tired and wore out and your blood sugar's gonna drop. And then you're gonna eat and you're gonna start that cycle all over again. You're just gonna get that surge and then you're gonna crash. Surge and then crash. So that's why you always wanna make sure that you get a good protein, a good healthy fat, and balance that out with a complex carbohydrate and don't eat just this simple sugar stuff that's gonna spike you up and drop you down. Cause that's how you're gonna gain weight. And that's gonna knock your, um, all your blood sugars and everything off. Um, and I did start to say something about vegetarians earlier, and I'm gonna throw this in there because I might have somebody on here right now who's a friend who is a uh, vegetarian, and I'm not gonna tell him who he is right now, but um, you have to be careful when you say that you're vegetarian because you eat a lot of stuff that is not good for you, and you will still end up with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. So just because you say that you're vegetarian or vegan or even plant-based if you don't do it right you're you're not doing yourself any favors you if you're still going to go get a bag of chips and say it's because it's vegan you're not doing yourself any favors because you still have all that saturated fat you still have all of those bad chemicals in it it's causing inflammation it's going to raise the blood sugar it's going to raise your weight up it's going to give you heart disease it's going to give you all kinds of things is quinoa filling very filling very filling so this dish that I'm actually making, when you see it, you'll be like, well, that, you know, doesn't look like a whole lot, but this meal can last me sometimes two or three days because there, it's so filling. All right, so got our quinoa. Now I'm gonna stop talking a little bit and add some stuff. So I like to make everything pretty, as you know, and I like to get my colors in there. So here's our red tomatoes. I'm gonna put in here, now it's Mediterranean, remember? And then I'm gonna put our Kalamato olives. If you don't want that many, you don't have to put that many in there. Um, and then we're gonna put in some cucumbers because they're nice and crisp. Cucumbers are very good for detox. And then I'm gonna put some red onions. And any of this you can modify yourself. You can leave it out if you don't like it. So then I'm also going to put in here some hummus. Now I'm putting my hummus right in the middle of this one. Again, I like things pretty and symmetry. And I'm gonna put some chickpeas here. And now I'm gonna explain that as to why I did that. So hummus is ground up chickpeas. And it's got a couple other things in it like tamari. Um, but there's a lot of protein in that also. So when you do a Buddha bowl like this, this is a complete meal. You've got your colors. We want all the colors of the rainbow because that's where all your phytonutrients are. And each color has a different health benefit to it. So you've got color, you've got flavor, you've got nutrition, you've got you know beneficial chemicals that you need for your health all right here in this bowl. And then the protein is what the commas has. And the chickpeas, it just gives it a little bit more like something solid to bite into. Um, but the chickpeas also have a lot of protein and fiber. So fiber lowers your insulin level, fiber keeps you hungry longer, fiber lowers your cholesterol, fiber balances your hormones. There, that's one of the things in all of my programs and my weight loss programs, um, our hormone programs, we talk a lot about fiber, insulin, inflammation. If you can get those things under control, you're golden and you're, you're gonna live forever.
All right, so the other thing that I have here, we talked about goat cheese and feta cheese last week. Um, I have feta here, and this feta is made of, um, you know, sheep and goat's milk. And you put that on there. A little bit of feta goes a long, long way because it's a very strong cheese. So I just sprinkle a little bit of that on there. And this is typically how a Buddha bowl is presented. All of it is around the, the center and it just looks pretty. And now we're gonna take our salad dressing and um, yeah, if I put too much, I put too much, it doesn't matter. This is the part where you get to do what you want. And I just usually kind of drizzle it across the top so that I make sure that I cover all of it. And then when you're ready to eat it, you stir it all up. So these don't always look the prettiest sometimes, but they are so good. So I am gonna stir this up because I am gonna eat this. This is one of the great benefits of the things that we do here is it's kind of like I'm making my own lunch. But look how much is in here. This is so, so filling. And it's good right away, but I also like to eat it a couple hours later after I put it in the fridge for a little bit, just because it lets all those flavors melt, melt, medge, whatever the heck. I can't talk today. So how does that look? How many people have actually made Buddha bowls? If this is something that you've done or if this is kind of like something new. And this is a lot, yeah, it's that noise. Katie just knocked something over. <laughs> any questions on any of that? I had talked a lot today, I'm sorry. I'm like, I was overloading you with all the medical information on it, but hopefully that way you also understand that that is why I'm doing it this is because there is a medical piece to it and I like to cook and I like to eat and I like to eat good things so if I bring those things all together what I like to do and what I have a little bit of information about a little bit of knowledge um, and it can help you then this is a fun way to do it so if there's no more questions nope everybody's quiet now they're all saying it looks good yeah anybody want bite? no um, so if you make it, let me know about it and don't forget to, uh, like the pages, share the videos, you know, all that stuff I'm supposed to say after I do this. So other people can see it and learn from it and get good information. Um, I'll be posting the recipe very soon. You guys have